Last week I revealed at the end of the video that there is something bigger than infinity, but I didn't tell you what it is. So this week we're going to talk about the continuum. I'm going to tell you what the continuum is, I'm going to give some examples of real world applications for it, and then at the end of the video I'm going to try to prove to you that the continuum is in fact bigger than infinity. Let's get started. Continuum is a quantity, it's an amount, in the same way that like a number is an amount or infinity is an amount of something, right? The continuum is talking about the size of some collection of things. What's an example of something that has continuous size, that has size C? We usually write it with this fancy letter C. There are a lot of examples that you could use, but this is my personal favorite. This is the one that makes the most sense to me. It's the number of points in a line. When I say a point, I don't mean like a pencil marking or like anything made out of pixels or even atoms, I'm talking about like a pure mathematical point, like an infinitesimally small, like zero size location. Clearly a line is made out of points, right? You know, there's, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. And the question is, how many points does it take to make a line? Clearly any finite number is not going to do the trick. If you have a finite number of points, you're not going to fill up the line. And I'm going to prove this at the end of the video, but it turns out that even if you have an infinite number of points, even if you start drawing points on the line and you never stop forever and ever, you're always still going to have points left over that you missed. You're always going to have empty space. When you think about the difference between the continuum and infinity, you should think that, you know, regular infinity, the kind we talked about last week, what some people call countable infinity, is kind of like, da, 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 da. you know, it goes on forever, but it's all separate objects. Whereas continuous infinity, this kind, is like a smooth, continuous, like, connected almost infinity. All of the objects, like, blend into each other smoothly. So this kind of infinity we call regular infinity, or mathematicians like to write it with this fancy Aleph knot. And this we call the continuum, or C. One of my favorite facts about the continuum is that it doesn't matter what size it is. You can have a tiny little line or an infinite line, and it's the same amount of points. And I can actually prove that. It's a kind of nice proof. You can take all of the points on this tiny little line and all of the points on this long infinite line, and you can, and you can match them up one to one. Every point has a match on the other line. And watch, I'll show you how to do it. The trick is you take the little line and bend it into a semicircle, kind of like this. And then you stick a little X in the middle. And then for any point on this line, you just connect from the X to that point and you kind of extend it out until it hits the big line. And now you see whatever point you pick here, it's going to correspond to exactly one point on the big line. And any point on the big line is going to correspond to exactly one point on the little line. So they match up perfectly. The points of a tiny little continuum and the points of an infinite continuum are in a one-to-one -one correspondence. There's the same amount. It's C points up here and C points down here. It's just about the density of points. How could this possibly be useful in the real world, right? In the real world, things are made out of atoms. They're not actually this like infinitely dense continuous substance, right? Even like my body. If you look at it from here, maybe it looks like a smooth, continuous thing, but if you zoomed in, you would see the atom, 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 atom. You know, it's distinct, separate objects. It's not continuous. So I have two answers to how people use the concept of the continuum in the real world. The real world. One is time is actually a continuum. At least the way that physicists model reality, they think of time as like a continuous stretch of moments. It's not like separate moment, 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 moment. It blends into each other seamlessly. And actually space is a continuum too in normal models of physics. I've been talking about one-dimensional continua like a line, but you can have a three-dimensional continuum like space. You can have any dimension of continuum. If you're interested in that, I think my next video is going to be on dimensions, so tune in next week for that. And so when people talk about the space-time continuum, that's all they mean, right? Like the actual particles, the matter of reality is made out of discrete separate points, particles, but the like fabric of reality that everything sits in is this three-dimensional or four-dimensional continuum. Now the other way that the continuum is useful, and this one actually blows my mind that this even works, is there's a special tool in math called a continuum sum. Technically it's called an integral, but I'm going to call it a continuum sum. And a continuum sum is when you take a continuum of things and you add them all together and somehow through some weird math magic, it gives you a concrete, actual, finite answer. 
that's really abstract, so let me give you an example. Let's say you have some sort of like curving path and you want to know how long it is, but all you have is a straight ruler. One trick you could use to get a sort of estimate is you can break it up into a bunch of little pieces that are almost straight lines, kind of like this. And you could measure all of these lengths and then add them up together and see what number that gives you. That's a pretty good way to get an estimate, but what if we need a more exact answer? What if we have to be more precise than that? Well, instead of breaking it up into like five pieces, you could break it up into like a hundred or even a billion pieces, measure very precisely, and add all of those pieces up together and get an answer. But mathematicians are really intense. That's not even good enough for us. We don't want an approximation to the hundredth decimal place. We want an exact, exact, correct answer. And so what we do, this is again really insane that this works, is we break up this path into a continuum of points and then add up each point doesn't have a length but has like an infinitesimal like lengthness to it and we add those all up and somehow it gives us a real actual answer something like six or pi. To be honest with you, I don't even fully understand in my gut how this works. I've seen it done a million times. I know the sort of math behind it, but the fact that you can do this and get real answers is still very bizarre to me. This is used all the time. There are more examples of it in the book, but this is used in physics, economics, engineering, all kinds of different stuff to get useful answers for the real world. But I don't wanna talk about that right now. I wanna to get to the main event. I wanna to prove to you that the continuum is bigger than infinity, so let's get into it. Now, a warning, this is is a kind of tricky proof. It definitely takes some thinking, so if you don't want to work your brain muscles today, now is a good chance to hit that X button. Okay, let's do some math. So I'm going to try to prove to you that all of the points on a line cannot be matched up one-to-one -one with a regular countable infinity. In other words, if every point on the line was a guest at Hotel Infinity, you would not be able to fit them in the hotel. Now, in order to prove that, I'm gonna first need to give a name to every point on the line so that we can keep track of who's been included and who's not. There are a lot of ways to name points. Sometimes you name points using numbers. I promised I wouldn't use any numbers, so let me use my own naming system here. The way I'm gonna name a point, let's say this is the point we're trying to name. First, we're gonna see, is it on the left half of the line or the right half? If it's on the left half, we give it an L. If it's on the right half, you give it an R. Then you see, is it on the left half or the right half of that half? Well, it's on the right half, so I put an R. Okay, you keep doing this. Is it on the left half or the right half of that piece? It's on the left. It's on the left. And so on and so on. And you can see that for any finite string of L's and R's, you're gonna sort of narrow it down to like some little piece of the continuum. But if you keep doing this forever and you have an infinite string of L's and R's, that's actually gonna give you an exact point on the line. Take some time to think about this if you need to, but try to convince yourself that every point on the line corresponds to a unique LR address like this, and every LR address picks out exactly one point on the line. So if that makes sense to you, now what we need to do is we need to prove that it's impossible to put all of the LR addresses, the possible combinations of L's and R's, into an ordered list. That no matter how you try to put them into a list, there's going to be something missing. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play a little game. Let's say your rival walks into the room, your worst enemy, and they say, ha ha, you're wrong. It is possible to match up the continuum in a regular infinite list, and I actually did it. Here is a list of every point of the continuum. It goes on forever, but it's an ordered list that contains every point on the continuum, every LR address. We're gonna try to prove that no matter what list they hand us, they are missing some points. So let me just draw out a list. It doesn't matter what specifically I write here. So your rival claims that every point of the continuum is somewhere in this list. I'm gonna show you now how I know that they're wrong. This is a really cute method. It's called the diagonalization argument. First, just take the first letter of the first address and write the opposite. Then take the second letter of the second address and write the opposite. Third letter of the third address, write the opposite. Down this infinite diagonal, you keep doing this process and you've generated now a new LR address at the top. Now here's a question. Is this new point the first point in the list? Well, no, it can't be because they disagree on the first letter. Is it the second point in the list? Can't be, because they disagree on the second letter. 
Is it the third point of the list? No. Whatever else is going on outside of that third spot, we know that the third spot is wrong, so they can't be the same point. In fact, could this be, you know, the 10,012th item in the list? Well, no, they disagree on the 10,012th letter. This new address that we just generated can't be anywhere in the list. This must genuinely be a new point that your rival is missing from their list. Therefore, this list is incomplete. Now, you might think, well, that list is incomplete, but why can't they just take that new point that you just generated and stick it somewhere in the list, maybe insert it right here at the top? That's the nice thing about this trick, is we can just run this same algorithm again, go down that new diagonal, and generate a new point that it's missing. No matter what list they give us, we are always going to be able to find a missing point. Any list of LR addresses is inevitably going to be missing some LR address. Any attempt to put all of the points in, of the line into an ordered list, even an infinite ordered list, is going to fail. It's going to be missing some points. Therefore, the continuum cannot be matched up with regular infinity. The continuum is bigger than infinity. Whew. If anything I just said there doesn't make sense to you, then that's my fault. I failed to convince you of this theorem. Please let me know in the comments where I lost you, and maybe me or someone else can jump in and try to convince you that the continuum is bigger than infinity. Now remember, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe, hit the post notifications bell, and of course, pre-order my book, Math Without Numbers, coming January 5th, 2021. We got new videos every Tuesday. Come back next week and I'll be talking about dimensions. Here are some terms you can look up if you're interested in what I talked about in this video. Have a great day. See you next week.